Hey guys, welcome again to the Mask Club. If you are just joining us, so welcome. So I'm starting a brand new concept known as algebraic processes. And under algebraic processes, we're going to be looking at algebraic expressions. So if you are just joining us, it's a good time to really subscribe to our channel. And if you go on to like the video, hit the like button. And if you know somebody that this channel can help, somebody in secondary school, somebody in maybe first university, please share the channel link with them. Let's get started. What is algebra? Algebra really deals with symbols and how we can use those symbols to solve problems, simple and short. So in algebra, you'll be seeing things like x, like 3x plus y is equal to 5. You'll be seeing something like y plus z is equal to, to find y or something like that, something very interesting like that. So which can stand for unknown quantities or expressions. So if I see something like 1 plus 3, 1 plus 3 is not an algebra. It is just a normal arithmetic expression. Right? But when you're seeing things like X, things like N, things like A, things like W, you know you're dealing with algebra. So example include X squared minus 1, X plus Y is equal to 3, things like that. So algebraic concepts are essential in various fields science, engineering, economics, computer science, where you're solving problems and you're making predictions. The reason why we use all those x, y, sometimes we don't know what x will be at the end of the day. So we just we just place it as a variable. It will help us in solving the problem or in making predictions. So we're looking at simple equation and simple equation is known as linear equation. A simple linear equation is an algebraic expression whose highest degree of the unknown is 1. So let's an example. So look at this. In this simplest case, I mean, there could be more complex cases, but this is like in the simplest case. You're going to be seeing things like ax plus b is equal to c, or ax minus b is equal to c. A is a constant. So it could be anything like 3, 4, 5. B is another constant. C is another constant. So the unknown that we have here is x. And we see x raised to the power of 1 is the same thing as x. So if we see an expression that the highest power of the unknown, in this case x, is 1, you're dealing with a simple equation. Or a linear equation. Let's look at an example. So I told that we should solve x plus 5 is equal to 10. This is the linear equation because x is the unknown and the highest power of x is 1. Let's solve this together. So if we wanted to solve this, we'll take the 5 to the other side by collecting like terms. I will say x is equal to 10 minus 5, and that will give us what? 5. So our x here is 5. I'm sure that is not a surprise to anybody. Great. So look at that example, we're told that if 8x minus 4 is equal to 6x minus 10, find the value of 5x. I want you to pause the video and try this out yourself. Welcome back. Let's solve it together. So the first thing I will do is that we'll create like them. So we're told 8x minus 4 is equal to 6x minus 10. So I could carry the x to the left hand side and the constants to the right hand side. So that would be 8x minus 6x is equal to minus 10 plus 4. So 8x minus 6 will give us 2x and minus 4 plus 10 will give us minus 6. If I divide both sides by 2, what would our x be? Our x will be equal to minus 3. And we're told to find the value of 5x. So therefore, 5x will just be equal to 5 times minus 3, which equals minus 15. So simple and short. Let's see if we're correct. Great. So 5x is equal to minus 15. This, is like this. this other example says that find the value of x such that the expression 1 over x plus 4 over 3x minus 5 over 6x plus 1 is equal to 0. I want you to pause the video and try this out yourself. Welcome back. Let's solve it together. So the first thing that we're told is 1 over x plus 4 over 3x minus 5 all over 6x plus 1 is equal to 0. So we can take like terms. Take this plus 1 to the other side. That would be 1 over x plus 4 over 3x minus 5 all over 6x is equal to minus 1. These are fractions. Remember when we're doing fractions? When we talk about adding of fractions, if you have not seen that video, you can click the pop-up that will appear at the top right. So the highest common factor here is going to be 6x. So 6x divided by x is 6 plus 6x divided by 3x is 2 times 4 is 8 minus 6x divided by 6x is 1 times 5 is 5 is equal to minus 1. 6 plus 8 is 14. 14 minus 5 is 9. 
So 9 over 6x is equal to minus 1. So if I cross multiply, I'll say minus 1 times 6x is equal to 9. And this, let's say, minus 6x is equal to 9. So if I divide both sides by minus 6, this will cancel this. Our x is just equal to minus 9 all over 6. And I can break this down. So our x is equal to minus 3 over 2. Or maybe it could be in terms of um, mixed fraction. So we could say minus 1 raised to the power of 1 over 2. So any of this would do. Let's see if we're correct. Great. So we have x as minus 3 over 2. So the question says that find the number n such that when one third of it, what is it? It is n, is added to it. The result is the same as when half of it is subtracted from it. And I want you to pause this video and try this out yourself. Welcome back. Let's solve it together. So I told that we should find the value of n when one third of it, that is 1 over 3 times n is added to 8. So we said 8 plus, we've added one third of n to 8. And he said the result is the same as when half of it is subtracted from 18. So this is 18. We're subtracting half of it, which is 1 over 2 times n. Simple and short. If you can get this, you've gotten the question. So this is 8 plus n over 3 is equal to 18 minus n over 2. Let's take like terms. So that'll be n over 3 plus n over 2 is equal to 18 minus 8. So the highest common factor here is 6. 6 in 3 is 2. 2 times n is 2n. Plus 6 in 2 is 3. 3 times n is 3n. Is equal to 18 minus 8 will give me 10. So this will be 5n over 6 is equal to 10. And if I cross multiply, what would that give me? So that would be 5n is equal to 10 times 6. I can divide both sides by 5 to make n stand alone. 5 will cancel 5. 5 year 1, 5 year 2. 2 times 6 is 12. So our n is equal to 12. Did they say we should find n in the question? So yes, the question said we should find the number n. So our n is equal to 12. Let's see if we're correct. Great. This next example says that a shop sells X notebooks at n naira each and Y pens at m naira each. Write an algebraic expression for the total cost C of buying X notebooks and Y pens. Pause the video and try this out yourself. Welcome back. Let's solve it together. It says that the shop sells X notebooks at N Naira each. So to buy the X notebooks, that will be N times X. Because if it sells X notebooks at N Naira each, so for me to buy the X notebooks, I have to pay N times X, which is simply as saying N X. And Y pens at M Naira each. So to buy y pens i have to spend m times y m which is the price of one and y which is the number of pens i want to buy which is something as saying m y and you know that we should write an algebraic expression for the total cost c of buying x notebooks and y pens so c will now be equal to the cost of buying x notebooks is nx plus the cost of buying y pens is m y so simple and short this is our answer let's see if we're correct great Example 6 now says that if n is equal to 50, m is equal to 30, x is equal to 3, and y is equal to 5, we should find total cost c. I want you to pause the video and solve this yourself. Welcome back. Let's solve it together. So we already know this. Let's just substitute. So our c will now be equal to n is 50. So that will be 50 times x is 3 plus m is 30 and y is 5. So 50 times 3 is 150 plus 30 times 5 is also 150 so our c is equal to 300 i don't know if this is going to be naira okay so this is naira yeah so because the previous question was naira naira each so this is 300 naira so our c is 300 naira let's see if we're correct great 300 naira the last question now says that two positive o numbers p and q are such that p is greater than q and their sum is equal to three times that difference. Express P in terms of Q and then evaluate P squared plus Q squared all over PQ. This is taken from work 2013. I want to actually pause the video and try this out yourself. Welcome back. Let's solve it together. So we're told that P and Q are positive O numbers. So that is certain. And they said P is greater than Q. So when that P is greater than Q. And their sum, which is P plus Q, 
is equal to three times the difference. So that will be three times because P is greater than Q. That will be P minus Q. So we know this. You see why it's very important. I could have said Q minus P, but that will have led to something else because P is greater than Q. So let's try to simplify this. So it will be P plus Q is equal to 3P minus 3Q. So let's take like terms. So P minus 3P is equal to minus 3Q minus Q. P minus 3P is minus 2P. Minus 3Q minus Q is minus 4Q. So if I divide both sides by minus 2, this will cancel this. Minus will cancel minus 2 will cancel. Our P is equal to 2Q. So we found the answer for 1, which is express P in terms of Q. So I, I now says that we should evaluate P squared plus Q squared all over PQ. So anywhere we see P, we are going to put 2Q. So that will be 2Q all squared plus Q squared all over 2Q multiplied by Q. So 2Q squared is 4Q squared plus Q squared all over 2Q times Q is 2Q squared. So 4Q squared plus Q squared will give me 5 q squared all over 2q squared so q squared will cancel q squared and this will remain 5 over 2 so by the time we simplify this answer we add 5 over 2 let's see if our answer is correct great so our p is equal to 2q and then this is also 5 over 2 and with this we've come to the end of this particular video if you have any questions let me know in the comment section and i will see you guys in the next video bye for now Thank you.